Hello, this is Susan Jenko, Chief School Administrator and Principal. And Michelle Waldron, Assistant Principal of Cranberry School. As the pandemic continues to pose challenges for all of us during the school year, we recognize the importance of flexibility and responsiveness on behalf of the students we serve. Our teachers, administrators, and support staff have been working tirelessly to support our students during this time of uncertainty. To that end, the district surveyed our families in an effort to better understand your experiences with the remote hybrid learning models this year. Thank you to all of our families for your feedback, which will help us to enhance our programs moving forward. We are pleased to report that there were 236 responses. This presentation is intended to summarize results in four areas, remote learning experiences, social emotional, communication, and technology. The strong response rate includes representation from all grade levels. It should be noted that the higher response in grade seven is in proportion to enrollment in that grade. This chart shows the percent of responses based on the total enrollment in each grade. The responses also mirror the learning programs which families selected for their children. Approximately 37% of our entire student body participate in the fully remote learning model. These numbers also represent a good response rate based on the number of students in each program. Our students participate in a variety of offered programs. Despite the pandemic, our students continue to participate in the many extracurricular activities offered at Cranberry School remotely and in person when possible. The district reimagined virtual band and choir lessons and integrated them within the daily schedule. We also committed to offering in-person intramural sports for our middle school students. Additional extracurricular activities continue to be available to students to support their respective areas of interest. Of course, remote only students are invited to participate in all clubs and activities. A debate club is about to be launched in the near future. We also wanted to glean student interest in additional activities after school. Although activities need to be offered virtually at this time, a majority of students may be interested in clubs or activities after school. The next slide breaks down the specific areas of interest. This reflects the number of students interested in each type of activity. We will use this data in planning for after school activities moving forward. For example, we are working collaboratively with the Cranberry Education Foundation to create opportunities for STEAM after school enrichment. The survey asked families to share about how remote learning has been going for parents as well as students. Overall, about three quarters of parents and students indicated that remote learning was going much better, better, or about as good as expected. 42.2% of parents ranked remote learning as better or much better than expected. These are favorable responses given the complexity of the challenges posed by the pandemic. We certainly recognize that some parents and students have experienced more significant challenges and we will continue to work with these families in any way possible. When looking at parent feedback, overall the parents of older students reported more favorable remote learning experiences. Remote learning is more challenging for our primary age children, which is why we prioritized in-person instruction for our youngest students. The responses on behalf of our students follow a similar pattern to the parent feedback in most cases. We will continue to dig deeper to identify trends for the less than favorable student experiences. Using this information, along with our knowledge of students, we can tailor our approach accordingly. This slide shows the amount of time that students spend on schoolwork, which includes live school sessions and independent assignments combined. While more than half of the students, 64%, are in the quote unquote sweet spot, there is variability at both ends of the spectrum that requires further analysis to ensure that our students are working optimally. Students report working three hours or less, as noted in the red, blue, and yellow, represent children across the grade levels. 
This slide further breaks down the amount of time students spend on schoolwork by grade level. Generally, the expected time spent on schoolwork would fall within the average range of three to six hours, which includes the green, purple, and light blue bars. It should be noted that pre-K students are working between one and three hours per day, which is consistent with their development and program. On the other hand, we are looking critically at students in grades one, two, five, and seven who report spending too much time on schoolwork, as well as approximately 25% of the respondents in grades K, two, and eight who are not spending the recommended time on daily schoolwork. We wanted to get a sense of students' experiences with remote learning in the afternoon. Afternoon learning looks different for each grade and class, but students are expected to participate in some form of remote learning in the afternoon. Most of the survey respondents indicated that students are participating in remote learning in the afternoon. As we look more critically at the students in the orange, it is important to share that seven total students reported participating in afternoon learning only once a week, most of which were our middle school students. Middle school special area classes are scheduled two to three times per week by grade in the afternoon. Attendance is taken and students are expected to attend these classes. Cranbuddy students do not participate in afternoon learning, as noted in the green section of this circle graph. As you can see, independent assignments are the most prevalent afternoon activity. This allows for small group instruction, one-to-one -one meetings with teachers and students, and differentiation of instruction to meet student needs. Many support classes are also scheduled in the afternoons for all grade levels. Moving forward, we hope to add more small group and one-to-one -one learning experiences for differentiation and feedback. We asked this question to really gauge parent feedback about their child's level of independence with remote learning and to determine if this is consistent with the teacher's perspective. While we are pleased that more than three quarters of our students are completely independent, or needing some assistance, we also recognize that other students, especially primary age children, need more help with things like technology or academics. We will continue to creatively respond to student and family needs during remote and in-person learning. We also hope to glean information about students' level of participation in remote learning. The survey data indicated that 77.5% of students are mostly actively engaged in remote lessons. We also are aware that other students do not participate as freely. For example, they may keep their camera off or remain quiet during remote lessons. Teachers will continue to make every effort to engage students in the full group and individually. If challenges continue, school counselors, counselors and support staff are available to assist. Counselors follow up with teachers and engage with students. For students experiencing significant difficulty participating in remote lessons, we have arranged support sessions with teachers. An established procedure is in place for teachers to report ongoing student concerns. As part of the district response to intervention model, student support committees meet weekly to respond to these concerns. As you might suspect, nothing can take the place of being together in school. The most frequently identified motivational strategies focus on in-person learning, developing personal connections with peers and teachers, and providing opportunities for socialization and collaboration. Small group and one-to-one -one learning opportunities are helpful in maintaining these connections. We also asked about the amount of academic screen time. While 44% of respondents reported that screen time is just the right amount, slightly over half of the respondents reported too much screen time. More kindergarten and first grade respondents reported too much screen time, which reflects developmental readiness. This is not surprising and is consistent with the qualitative feedback we have received. Just as Goldilocks and the Three Bears described the porridge, we continue to seek the just right balance. Our teachers continue to work with their classes or individual students to achieve the right amount of breaks in screen time 
throughout the instructional day and help alleviate screen fatigue. Over the past 10 months, the impact of the pandemic has heightened the importance of social emotional well being. Nonetheless, social emotional functioning has always been at the core of our work. With this in mind, we ask respondents to indicate their level of concern with regard to their child's social emotional health. We fully expected that the majority of families would report some worry for their child given the circumstances, circumstances surrounding the pandemic. Social emotional health will continue to be a school-wide focus with specific attention to supporting those who reported being very or extremely concerned for their child. We also asked respondents to describe the level of stress in the home related to remote learning. A strong majority of respondents indicated stress levels to be at or better than expected. That said, more than one quarter of respondents reported a high level of stress in their home, as noted in green and purple. Furthermore, the results of our school counseling survey reinforced that stress and anxiety is a concern for our families. It is important to tease out the reasons behind these concerns in order to increase targeted resources. If you haven't already done so, please take a look at our most recent Counselor Corner weekly newsletter, which included information and strategies for managing stress and anxiety. Digging a bit deeper, we asked parents to describe their concern with regard to peer relationships due to physical and social distancing. More than two thirds of respondents indicated that they are somewhat or very anxious about their child's peer relationships. The primary grades in the eighth grade class reported the most concern for peer relationships for different developmental reasons. With this in mind, we continue to reimagine what peer connection looks like, turning obstacles into opportunities. These results reinforce our ongoing efforts to create safe opportunities for peer interactions like lunch munches, after school intramurals and clubs, PTO sponsored activities, and more. Communication. In these virtual circumstances, we wanted to take the pulse on the effectiveness of district and faculty communications. Respondents reported that emails and push notifications were most helpful to them. Push notifications have been useful in alerting parents to more lengthy emails. Furthermore, the district has been selective about when and how frequently to use the different forms of communications. The nature of the content has determined the communication method used. Communication between teachers and parents is more important than ever since routines have been disrupted and students are participating in different learning models. Classroom teachers are predominantly using email as a means to communicate with families, which has been most helpful. Classroom schedules and students' academic progress is shared through the respective learning management system or Google Classroom. In addition, the middle school families have access to PowerSchool. We are working to identify opportunities to strengthen communication around student progress in the younger grades. Technology integration has been essential to delivering remote instruction. Cranberry School made technology a priority by allocating resources and support during this shift to virtual learning. Since the pandemic began in March, all students have had access to a working device. Our staff has worked collaboratively with families to ensure that our students have the access they need to succeed during remote learning. Many thanks are extended once again to the Cranberry Education Foundation for the purchase of 100 Chromebooks and to our Cranberry School Instructional Technology Department for their steadfast dedication to keeping our students connected. Responded comments also confirmed that some families opted to use their personal devices after experiencing difficulty with the district issued Chromebooks. Some of these issues were universal across New Jersey school districts and beyond our scope. Our technology team continues to work in tandem with all stakeholders to analyze the reasons behind these challenges and to provide ongoing strategies to improve technology functioning. We are pleased to see that roughly 78% of families almost never or once a week or less experience technology or internet connectivity issues as identified in the green and orange. Our instructional technology department and teachers are responsive to those families who experience more frequent connectivity issues. 
Again, three quarters of our respondents reported that their family is not experiencing technology issues. We know that technology issues are inevitable. However, the district remains steadfast in our commitment to troubleshoot and problem solve issues in real time with both parents and students. We also wanted to get a sense of students' experience with technology tools. As you can see, our students are having mostly positive experiences using video conferencing tools like Zoom or Google Meet. Our teachers have shifted between Zoom and Google Meet in response to student needs when warranted. Our technology team provides ongoing professional development and shares timely software updates to maximize efficiency and effectiveness. Again, the majority of students are meeting with success in using learning platforms such as Google Classroom and Seesaw. Parent feedback revealed that some parents preferred to have a single location to view information about their child's program, including assignments and tests. Teachers are now using a more extensive variety of virtual instructional tools and linking them to the class learning platform. And finally, Bravo to our Chromebook Help Desk staff for their timely responsiveness and going over and above wherever needed. Here are some key takeaways to help guide our efforts moving forward. Technology access and support is strong, which is so vital during remote learning. Varied communication methods are effective. Student and parent remote learning experiences were predominantly rated as expected or better than expected. The challenge of remote learning has created opportunities for students to develop independence and self-direction with learning and technology. Commitment and efforts of teachers, administration, and staff is recognized and appreciated by parents. Consider options to reduce screen time and add breaks for students as needed. Transition times are especially challenging for students, parents, and staff. For example, Students may not have enough time to record assignments for the next day, take a break, or prepare for their upcoming class. Continue to develop and enhance afternoon learning activities. Identify methods to communicate student progress in the elementary grades in lieu of power school. Students crave safe peer socialization opportunities. Maintaining strong connections is everything. Strong connections between students, between students and teachers, and between parents and the district are so important. With this in mind, we will continue to identify ways to expand elementary extracurricular, extracurricular activities and expand opportunities to build peer connections in the middle school. Continue to monitor anxiety and stress levels and offer varied supports. And certainly, we will continue to offer in-person learning whenever possible and without compromising the health and safety of students and staff. Once again, thank you to our Cranberry School families for sharing valuable feedback. We remain grateful for your ongoing partnership.